Hello, welcome back to my channel, Mary Reads to Live. Today, we're going to do a very exciting tag that I really have seen other booktubers do, and I really love that um, all their answers are so fun, is the mid-year freakout tag. So let's get started. The first question is, best book that you've read so far in 2023? Now, this is a loaded question because I read, I've read some really great books so far. But so far, I would have to say it's Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. I loved this book so much. It is actually kind of an offshoot of the Farseer trilogy, which is her first trilogy in the Realm of the Elderlings. And in the Realm of the Elderlings, we're, we are following another set of characters, but this is set in that same world. And it's about the traders, the live ship traders, and a family who are a family who own a live ship. And some of their struggles and how the character and family struggles for their own connections, but also about these life ships, which are like magical ships that come alive after a certain point. And they can go, they can be very human in the way that they do, um, they react to things and how they become a kind of part of that community themselves. And they, they can even go mad um, because if they're not treated well, right, they're, if they're treated just as blunt objects and not treated well they can go mad and so this is the first in that series which is Ship of Magic and this is kind of an introduction to the fam the, the family that we're following the live ship that we're following and it's nearest pirates just found family it's really really good really interesting and great characters and I can't wait to see where it goes next so that is the live ship traders trilogy and it's the first one mad ship it's the best book I've read so far this year all right, and then my second, the best sequel you've read so far this year. Now, this is a book that I don't have physically. I have it on the ebook, and that is The Bitter Twins by Jen Williams. The Bitter Twins by Jen Williams is a, the second book in the Winnowing Flame trilogy. And in that trilogy, we're talking, we have a, another kind of a, a conflict between two species on this world, three species actually on this world, and there are animal companions, there are dragons. It's really interesting. It's about how <clears throat> the how are these people going to come together to survive? How are these races going to come together to survive, even though they're being threatened by this outside force, and they are going to need to learn more of their history, and they're going to have to learn how to ride ride these animal companions into battle and it's very interesting very fun great battle scenes great characters and i gave it four stars four and a half stars actually i wanted to give it five stars but it was a little there were a few things that i think could have been stronger but as a whole i loved i loved it i loved it kind of a, a, a perfect second book in my opinion it's start, yeah, sorry. <laughs> perfect, perfect second book, in my opinion. Beautifully written. Good job, Jim Williams. And I can't wait to see what you do next. And then the third one. New release, new release you haven't read yet, but you want to. New release you haven't read yet, but want to. Oh, that definitely has to be the, the book that wouldn't burn by Mark Lawrence. That is actually coming in the mail. I don't have it yet, but it's, I'm going to have a picture of it here, but it's by Mark Lawrence, the, the book that wouldn't burn. I've heard so much about this, about this book. I don't not, not sure what it's, what it's about. I haven't read it, but it's highly anticipated. And it's, I'm assuming that it's about a, it's about a library that has some very important books in it and magic books and well, who doesn't love a story like that? So I'm excited about that. So that's going to be my most anticipated. Number four. The most anticipated book for the second part half of the year would have to be Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. This, it's the second book that Travis Baldry had put out, and it's in the same world, I believe, as Legends and Lattes, and may even have a familiar character from it, so I'm excited about that. It's the... 
I love Legends and Lattes, so I'm very, very excited to continue with the series. And this is kind of low stakes, slice of life fantasy that I've started, I've become really fond of, so I'm excited to read that. That's mine that was anticipated for the second half of the year. The biggest disappointment in 2023 so far, I would have to, so far, I would have to say that that would be, for right now, would have to be Middle March, and it's only because, but Middle March by um, George Eliot, and that's only because I was struggling with how many characters there are and what's going on in this world. It's cruel rule building, and, I, and I'm not saying that it's a bad book. It's not. I thought it's, I'm just taking me a long time to get through it compared to my other books, and it's not because because I've been in through into so much fantasy lately that it's like really dragging for me. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna have to. Uh, go back and just read it and get more into the headspace for it. So it's not a bad book. It's actually, I was very interested in some of the characters and things like that. So I've had a really good reading year. And so just to say that it is a disappointment is kind of not totally true. But if I'm going to say the book that it, I struggled the most to read would have been Middle March. And usually I don't struggle to read classics all that much. So I think it's just that I've been reading so many good fantasy that I've just used to a little bit of a different pace than what Middlemarch is doing and so but I, I am enjoying it in general so I'll have to check back in with you once I actually get finished with it. The the greatest the next question is the greatest surprise of 2023 and I would have to say that it is Great Expectations by Charles Dickens and the way reason I say that is because I didn't really jive with his writing style when I was first reading this when I was younger which of course I was young, so that makes sense. But as I've matured as a reader, I've become to really appreciate his. Sorry, I've become to really appreciate his prose and his language and his storytelling. And really, this is this to me, from what I've read so far, is one of his best of his storytelling. I like this, and I also really love *A Christmas Carol*. So these are the two. Charles Dickens that I really enjoyed so far, and I'm going to be reading more Dickens as we go along, but I've got so much fantasy to catch up on, because I'm really behind on my fantasy, so. But Great Expectations was a surprise. I loved this story. Of course, Great Expectations is about a young boy named Pip, who has an abusive <clears throat> sister who took care of him when, when their parents passed away, and he has expectations that he wants to become a gentleman he wants to be rich and have more some more respect in the community and so it talks about what he what is he willing to do to get that and is he and how does he survive being a naive young man in a very dog eat dog society so it's very interesting i love the the commentary that carl Dickens puts in here about class and about your what your own expectations for your life can do to you and also what how to keep sight of what's really important in your life so very good very good I gave this I think I gave this like five stars loved it my favorite new authors what I have two which really started last year so but my favorite new authors for 2023 would have to be R.F. Kuang who wrote the Poppy War and Bab Babel and now Yellow Face that's coming out. I haven't read Yellow Face yet, but I will. And also, of course, Robin Hobb that I have just talked about. Uh, Robin Hobb becoming my new favorite author. She has wonderful prose, wonderful characters, and world building. Her world building is bar none. I'm so immersed. Like I when I came when I come out of her books, I feel as if I had been transported to another world and it's almost jarring to come back to reality and be like, wow, I'm not, I'm not there anymore. What's going on? <laughs> so I loved it so much. You get so immersed and it's just a perfect escape fantasy. And I'm so glad that I discovered her. So thank you very much. <laughs> the booktubers out there who <clears throat> encouraged me to read this. Let's see. Newest fictional crush. New fictional crush, I would have to say. I don't really 
my gift crushes as I'm reading, but I'd have to say that I really, really enjoyed my fictional crush would have to be Wintro from Mad Chef. And the reason I say that is because he is a very spiritual person and I really connected to that. I thought it was so sweet how he wanted to help people and he was just so kind of naive, but he was so sweet and what this world is doing to him breaks my heart. And so I don't think it's a crush fictional crush so much as say I just want to give him a hug. I want to take care of him. But Wintro is a young is a young man who was um, given to the priesthood by his family and now he's thrust into become into being a sailor and it just turned his whole world upside down but he's such he i like him he's such a sweetheart <clears throat> and does he always make the best decisions no but it's robin hop so you don't expect all her characters to make the most optimal decisions because that's just that's good characterization because it's realistic so it's really really good that's that's my answer for <laughs> fictional crush now my new favorite my my favorite character so far would have to be Night Eyes from Royal Assassin, which is also Robin Hobb. Night Eyes is an animal companion, but you know, they can count as characters, love Night Eyes to death. You know, you know, I'm not going to spoil it, but that's my answer. He's <laughs> funny. He's truthful and loyal and I absolutely absolutely I love him though so. and when we're talking about favorite characters actually I forgot to mention that I when we're talking about favorite characters I would love to Saquara Saquara from the Yodan trilogy would be one of my favorite characters so just putting that in there now that Saquara would be one of my favorite characters she's strong she's got an awesome kick butt magic and she really knows how to bring it when she needs to she's trying to keep her people alive and love it love her she's such a strong character good the book that made me cry was tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow by gabrielle zevin and the reason it made me cry is that this book it was set in the 80s so it was already very much relatable to me because i grew up when i when i grew up i grew up in the 80s and these characters really bond over creativity and creating something, like um, which I find very relatable. I thought it was because I like video games and cre being creative and writing and all these kinds of things. And they could they bond over video games and then they then creating video games, and it really helps them through the difficulties of their lives. And they really it's heart wrenching because you see the trials that they go through and even to keep their friendship in one piece after trying to collaborate and work on these different, on these projects together. And <clears throat> even though one character is going through different struggles with ableism because it's disabled while the other character, another character is going through sexism and abuse and how, the com you know, they communicate or don't communicate about these things and how they come to a head and just kind of, um, all can be explosive and destructive in, in the creative process and in their relationships and how it, those kinds of things lead into their relationship. So I think that it's very, very good, very emotionally impactful. So that's what made me cry. <laughs> this book that made me cry. All right, and let's see. Her last question. A book that made me happy this year. A book that made me happy this year would have to be The Tea Dragon Society by Kay O'Neill and you get to follow these some uh, character that is trying to figure out it's a, it's a slice of life but it's also a coming of age kind of figuring out what the, the characters and you're trying to figure out what they want to do with their lives and they and how what they learn from taking care of these little dragons and it's so cute and so beautiful the art is gorgeous I don't have a copy of it but the art is gorgeous you can see from the cover I'm gonna put here but it's very pretty and very uh, very calming and it's just a slice of like beautiful story so that is my answer for that the next question is most beautiful books that you have come to own this year now last year my answer would have been my my dune hardcover but this year it, i have three here that i have that i can't i can't choose between so you're just gonna have to deal with having three one and this is in no particular order is winter's keep 
which look at that cover look at that beautiful cover i love the colors i love the the details and i love the the shadows it's just a beautiful color beautiful design love it it wraps all the way around look at that it's just gorgeous i love this so much so much and this one is a it went it's Winter Keep by Kristen Cashor, and it's about, it looks like it's a, it's about a <laughs> queen that is, that resigned, and now their society is rebuilding, the people are rebuilding, and so, and that's basically, I haven't read it, so I don't know what it's about, but this is a gorgeous cover that I have so and I haven't read it yet so I can't tell you really what it's about but gorgeous just one of the one of the books I'd like to read this winter and then of course everybody has been talking about this book and I have to say the fantasy romance isn't quite my genre but when I looked at the cover of this and saw this book like I couldn't not get it fourth wing by Rebecca Yaros and look at that cover. It's stunning. It's beautiful. I beautiful cover. It got the and it also has the sprayed edges. I'm just so happy with it. I haven't read this either. So I can't tell you what it's about. Except well actually I can. It's about a, a young woman who is forced to go to this uh dragon flying school academy and um it's very dangerous. People die doing this and she's actually uh, not very strong so apparently it, she's very much picked to be one of the ones that's going to die but her mother forces her to go anyway and so this is about her struggles in this magical academy which i really love i like that kind of thing anyway so i'll probably enjoy it but i'm expecting this to be a very kind of um quick light read for when i need a break from all the epic fantasy but this is uh we'll have to see what i've heard good things about it so let's see but it is beautiful. It's one of the reasons I got it. Okay, the next one. Those, those are my my covers. The third, well, the third one would have to be the Prophet of the Dan. Look at that cover. The thing like gas windows. The the beautiful. Look at that. It's gorgeous. It's got the dragon in the back. It's got a beautiful stained light glass windows. It's got powerful character on the front. It's gorgeous. Now, this is the second book to the A Dan Trilogy by Philip Chase. It's a beautiful, wonderful book. It's about a holy war that is fought between nations and they're using different magical creatures to try to force people into their faith. And this is about the people fighting against, back against them. And there's wonderful magic. There's elves. There's dragons. It's, it's an amazing, it's a really good story. So I'm looking forward to finishing this. I'm not quite done with it. But once I do, I will give you guys a report back. So it's really good. Books I need to read this year. Now, the next question. So, um, books I want to read before the end of the year. The next question. And that is, one of them is Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. It's a dark fantasy and that's basically all I know about it. I don't know very much. So I'm excited. I love vampires. And it's a big boy. So big book. So it's going to take me some time. So hopefully this will carry me through October. And it's going to be about a empire that is ruled by vampires. I'm excited to read it. So And plus that cover. Very pretty. So I enjoyed that too. So we'll have to see. I love a good vampire story. And it's got illustrations, which I think is lovely. So this is probably one should have been in my one of my beautiful. I didn't. I would have put this in one of my in my most beautiful books that I own. Got this year, but I wanted to use it for this one. So, <laughs> Empire of the Vampire. But the biggest stuff is one that I need to read before the end of the year. I want to read. Mad Ship, which is the second of the uh, Black Ship Traders trilogy. I want to read this because I'm excited about it. I want to continue on with that series. The third book of the Adan trilogy. 
which will be coming out before the end of the year. So I'm excited about that. So I want to read the, first, the third book. So that's very anticipated. I really do want to finish this trilogy this year. So it's a really good trilogy. I should do recommend everyone to check it out. Good, great, great writing. Very imaginative, good characters, good world building. And I'm very much looking forward to it. And favorite books to movie adaptations. Okay. So the favorite book to movie adaptations. Now, I don't know if we're talking for like ever, because if ever, it would have to be The Lord of the Rings. But if we're talking about just recently being put to into a, a show, it would probably have to be the His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. That would have to be a great, uh, that's done by HBO. HBO has, adopt, has adapted it and it's really good, really well done. Great casting, good, good direction, good uh, screenplay. So, and it follows the book pretty well. So I would suggest that, I mean, His Dark Materials by, um, done by HBO. That would be my favorite adaptation. All right, I think that is all I have. Now I'm gonna have to put these massive books <laughs> books away. Um, but I also wanted to put in here that I am going to be read this week. I'm going to be reading. I'm going to be hopefully this week and next week finishing up the Prophet of Adan, and I will be giving you guys a review of the way of a dan and the prophet of a dan i'm going to be doing that together so that we can be anticipating the third book but i'm going to try to do it spoiler free first and then may i may have a section for spoilers but i'll i'll, I'll block that off so you know timestamps or whatever that you know that it could be spoilers but i'm going to be talking more about the prophet of a dan so that's going to be coming up in the for the next videos I'm also going to be finishing up the Farseer trilogy, which is by Robin, the Far Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb, and I have the I'm reading the last book right now, which is the Assassin's Quest, and so once I finish that, I'm going to wrap up that whole series and tell you kind of what my favorite book is in that series and why. So. Thank you for joining me and I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day. I hope you had a wonderful 4th of July and as always, have an adventure with reading. Bye!